Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel released a first look at Captain America 4 New World Order featuring most of the major characters in a couple super deep cuts returning from the Incredible Hulk movie. A lot of Hulk characters in this movie. We also got a first look at Sam's new Captain America suit. He's going to get a brand new suit during the movie and some of the other villains as part of the Serpent Society because they'll be a big group during the movie. Which is actually the payoff to a joke that Kevin Feige told heading into Captain America Winter Soldier way back in the day. I, I understood that reference. I know everybody's looking for an Edward Norton cameo scene now as his version of the Hulk. I'm not expecting him to show up till Avengers 6 Secret Wars, but we'll break it all down. I'll explain what's going on. We also learned why the movie is called Captain America New World Order, like what that New World Order means. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The events of Captain America 4 will lead directly into Thunderbolts. That's meant to be the very end of Marvel Phase 5, culminating with Val using the Weapons Plus program to create the Sentry, played by Steven Yoon. It's now been confirmed that he is playing the MCU Sentry. The brand new scenes that just posted are of a battle that Sam's Captain America is getting ready to have with the Serpent Society while wearing his brand new super suit. Everyone gets new suits in their movies. Spider-Man always gets new suits. Iron Man, even Steve Rogers' Captain America got new versions of the suit. The funny reason why they said they got rid of Sam's cowl from the comics, though, is because they said when they were making Falcon and Winter Soldier, the cowl caused them all kinds of trouble while filming. They had to spend a bunch of money to fix it in post, so they just got rid of it completely to make it easier for them to film. In the rest of his new suit is just meant to be a combination of Steve Rogers' newest suit, like the darker suit from Avengers Endgame, and his previous comic book suit from Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's still made of vibranium, though. Like, the wings are still vibranium. The characters here he's getting ready to fight might seem familiar. This is Seth Rollins, most of you know from the WWE. I believe he's playing Cobra or Constrictor, one of the bigger members of the Serpent Society. The woman that's with him is meant to be a version of Diamondback, as denoted by the diamond symbol on her suit. They just changed her suit from the comics. She's fought Sam Wilson's Captain America before. They're billing the Serpent Society as like the obvious, marketable main villains of the movie. But what's really going on is that Val is supposed to be funding them using the CIA to use them to obtain adamantium, which has been discovered on Tiamat's body, the dead celestial in the Indian Ocean from the Eternals movie. So it's Val continuing to be super shady working with villains. She kind of implied that during Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're not going to need Captain America. Things are going to get real weird real fast, meaning that she's going to get super shady real fast. It sounds like when things go sideways with the Serpent Society in this movie, that'll clear the path for her to create the Thunderbolts. The next scenes we have are actually from a funeral that they're doing. And a lot of people are wondering whose funeral is this meant to be? Because Falcon, Captain America, I mean, they're just calling him Captain America. He's there in his full formal military dress uniform with this other woman also in formal military dress. The rumor is that she's playing his love interest in the movie, also from the military. Makes sense. Torres is also back from Falcon and Winter Soldier. He's still Captain America or Falcon, however you want to think about him, his sidekick. By the events of this movie, it'll be like the progression in the comics. When Anthony Mackie becomes Captain America, Torres becomes the new Falcon with a new set of wings. So like online, there's just been a lot of, a lot of stuff about Steve, actually. Some people... Some people, they think that he's in the secret base on the moon. Here's the big thing, though. They brought back Liv Tyler as Betty Ross from way back in the Incredible Hulk movie. Like, she's finally back. There have been rumors about her coming back and cameoing at some point for a long time now. They haven't confirmed any kind of crazy multiverse cameo scenes from Edward Norton as his Bruce Banner Hulk, but there are a lot of other characters from that Incredible Hulk movie that are back during this. As you can see, Betty Ross is dressed in the customary black in U.S. funerals. If you look around at the tombstones in the cemetery where they're at at this funeral, there aren't any big Easter eggs on the tombstone names, but that doesn't really mean anything necessarily. Marvel will probably alter those tombstone names in post-production just to avoid spoilers. But here's the thing. This funeral they're at is probably for Thunderbolt Ross himself. There's a new scene of him on set separate, like a completely different scene wearing a regular dress suit. And if you didn't realize, they did recast Harrison Ford as Thunderbolt Ross. William Hurt passed away recently. Originally, it was going to be him in the movie. And the reason why they wanted to recast him instead of using a completely different character is because Thunderbolt Ross's character was so critical to the plot that they're doing, the overarching plot for all of Marvel Phase 5, like this whole Dark Reign era that they're doing in the MCU, because they wanted to turn Thunderbolt Ross into Red Hulk during this movie. And they didn't want to completely pivot and just turn Val into Red Hulk. Like, they have other plans for Val. God damn it, I want... What's inside of him? 
Val's other alias in the comics is Madame Hydra, and she's critical to the villain storyline during the movie, though. Like, there's a lot of shady stuff going on in the background. She's kind of a villain in the same way that Sharon Carter is a villain. Like, characters that don't actually have superpowers just work with technology or wield enormous political influence. So what I think is actually going on in this funeral scene that they're filming is that Val and Thunderbolt Ross are pretending like Thunderbolt Ross dies during the movie and using that as an excuse so the public will stop thinking about him. Like, it'll be a great tragedy and they'll use it to their advantage. But they use this to fool all the heroes like Anthony Mackie's Captain America as well so that everyone thinks that he's dead and stops worrying about him. And while that's happening, Val uses the Weapons Plus program and the leader character, who's also back from Incredible Hulk, you notice he's green now like he is in the comics. You can see Tim Blake Nelson getting ready for another scene here. His hands are painted green because they're just doing the rest of the green for his body and motion capture, his larger head, the visual effects. So he doesn't have to wear a giant rubber head around on set. You also notice that his shade of green will be a little bit different from the Hulk's just to differentiate all the different characters with gamma powers. Val is going to use him to turn Thunderbolt Ross into the Red Hulk because this whole thing Incredible Hulk was experimenting with the Hulk's blood. They even used She-Hulk to tease Red Hulk. And the reason why they weren't worried about Harrison Ford being so old when they recast him, like he's played US presidents before, so obviously he's good for a role like that. But when it comes to all the action, like the big fight scenes, you have to remember that he's going to be motion capture Red Hulk for most of the movie so they can do all the crazy Hulk versus Red Hulk, Red Hulk versus other characters like Red Hulk versus Captain America fights. And it's no big deal. The one person we haven't actually seen on set yet is Mark Ruffalo's regular Bruce Banner Hulk. And a lot of the plot is revolving around him. And he's been worried about this Red Hulk type of twist for a long time now. He spoke about that at length during She-Hulk. Like, we have to destroy all blood samples of us so that nobody can use our powers for evil. Also, by the events of the movie, Thunderbolt Ross is supposed to have become U.S. president. I believe something's supposed to happen to the previous U.S. president during the Secret Invasion series because Secret Invasion led to Dark Reign in the comics. That's what they're using the Secret Invasion series to set up in the MCU. I believe during the series, something's supposed to happen to that previous U.S. president, like they find out that he's secretly a Skrull or he winds up dying or is assassinated in some way. According to Don Cheadle, who we see Rhodey in all the Secret Invasion trailers, by the events of Secret Invasion, he's meant to be the right-hand man advisor to that previous U.S. president. And once something happens to that previous president, that paves the way for Thunderbolt Ross to become president. And they'll use him for like a Norman Osborn style twist at the end of the comic book Secret Invasion, where he winds up taking most of the credit for getting rid of the bad scrolls. Everybody loves him, but he's Thunderbolt Ross, so he uses that to gain more power by becoming the U.S. president. And when that happens, he just opens the floodgates and lets Val do whatever she wants to do. All the shady stuff that they normally would think was too crazy to do all the stuff that the previous U.S. president wasn't willing to do. She's already become director of the CIA by the events of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. She already wields enormous power. It's just that now she has carte blanche to do whatever she wants. Here's when we get to the X-Men Easter Eggs Weapons Plus program, the new MCU version of Wolverine. Val's also going to be running the new Weapons Plus program, and that's how she creates the Sentry by the events of the Thunderbolts movie. He's just one of the next Weapons Plus, like Captain America or the Abomination. During Captain America New World Order, they're going to pay off the dead Celestial from the Eternals movie. They learn adamantium is discovered on Tiamat's body, and it becomes a race by all the world governments to try and claim it first. If you don't know the difference between adamantium and vibranium, the whole idea is that adamantium in the comics was originally meant to be synthetic vibranium. Scientists in the United States were trying to replicate vibranium, but they wound up accidentally creating adamantium. Adamantium is just meant to be unbreakable. Vibranium reflects force. That's why it's so easy for Wolverine, say, to claw through vibranium. It's kind of like a crazier version of Black Panther using his vibranium claws to claw Captain America's vibranium shield. Like, imagine Wolverine slicing through Captain America's shield. So the new adamantium that they discover on Tiamat is the key behind the new version of Weapon X, Weapon 10, like he's just the 10th iteration of the Weapons Plus program. But I don't think they're going to debut a new MCU version of Wolverine till well after Hugh Jackman comes back in the Deadpool 3 movie as his Wolverine and during Avengers 6 Secret Wars. So I still think it's going to be several years before a new MCU Wolverine shows up. The next couple of years, we'll just see Easter eggs for it, like this adamantium showing up. Like, oh, now they can create a new Wolverine. They've been talking about the main villain of the movie being the leader character, but they also say that the Serpent Society is supposed to be one of the villain groups in the movie. In the comics, Val, a.k.a. Madame Hydra, is behind the Serpent Society and the Serpent Squad, like an evil team from the Serpent Society. 
Sharon Carter is also supposed to be working with the Serpent Society in the movie. That was what the teaser at the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier was all about. She was speaking on the phone with the Serpent Society characters, saying that they were just going to pilfer the U.S. military stores now. And the name New World Order, like the title of the movie, Captain America New World Order, is a reference to the Winter Soldier movie. During that movie, Arnim Zola talks about Hydra's grand plan, saying that their New World Order is about to begin. Once the purification process is complete, Hydra's new world order will arise. That's what the movie title, Captain America New World Order, means. The Serpent Society with Sharon Carter herself, Val, Thunderbolt, Ross, Red Hulk, are basically trying to take over, create a new world order. So the movie will have a very Winter Soldier type of vibe with all this crazy Red Hulk stuff going on in it and this adamantium stuff. We'll start getting more footage for the movie soon, so of course I'll do more videos, and I'm working on a Loki Season 2 trailer video that should post in the next couple of days. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my breakdown of the new Deadpool 3 title and Easter eggs for the Loki series, and click here for my brand new Secret Invasion trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.